بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam as you know the series of lecture we are going through in this month is about the Muslim family based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he alayhi salatu wa salam said khayrukum khayrukum li ahli the best amongst you is the one who is best towards his own family. And when it comes to your family, your parents come first and foremost. When it comes to the rights of the parents, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put great emphasis on the importance and significance of the obedience and being dutiful towards parents in the Quran. Allah Jalal Ikram says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا We took covenant from Bani Israel that you will not worship except Allah alone and you must remain dutiful to your parents. Which shows that this obligation of being dutiful to parents is something that is not particularly for this ummah, rather this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obliged the previous nations as well with. Banu Israel, the people of the book, they were also commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be kind, gentle and dutiful to parents. Allah al-Jalal Ikram addresses the believers in the Quran saying, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah alone and do not associate anything with him as a partner. Dhul Jalali ul Ikram. Wabil walidaini ihsana and show your kindness and your dutifulness towards your parents. Waqada Rabbuka Allah Ta'abudu illa iyahu wabil walidaini ihsana. In Surah Al Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waqada Rabbuk, your Lord has ordered. Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram has decreed Allah ta'abudu illa iyyah that you will not worship except him Dhul Jalal Ikram alone wa bil walidayni ihsana and that you must remain dutiful to your parents. So there are many ayat in the Quran that highlight the significance and importance of being dutiful to our parents. And this is one of the greatest rights of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the rights of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon us. We as a Muslim, we have many duties. Being Muslim, we have many duties, many responsibilities. First and foremost, we have our responsibilities to our Creator, Allah dhul jalal al ikram And the greatest of those duties and responsibilities or obligations is to worship Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram alone. And then after our duties and, and our responsibilities to Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram comes the rights and the duties, the duties and the responsibilities towards the creation of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. When it comes to the creation of Allah, first and foremost, we must pay our duties to our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam no one comes after the Prophet ﷺ except your parents. 
That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the mention of his worship and dutifulness towards the parents together in the Quran in many places. To that extent, this is a great and high duty and responsibility. And there is obviously with each responsibility, with each, each duty and which, with each obligation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set certain rewards for us. On the other hand, if you neglect those duties and responsibilities and you neglect your obligations, then there will be severe punishment as well. So in today's lecture, inshallah, we are going to go through some ayat of the Quran, some ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the duty and with regards to our responsibilities towards our parents. And also, we'll need to look at those ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he alayhi salatu wa salam has warned us about or against the negligence towards our parents or disobedience to our parents. Allah Jalalikram says, as I just mentioned, the ayah from Surah Bani Israel or from Surah Al Isra, Waqada Rabbuka Allah Ta'abudu illa iyahu wa bil walidaini ihsana. That your Lord has decreed that you must not worship except Him Dul Jalal Vikram alone and you must remain dutiful to your parents. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how and what is the best way and method of being dutiful to your parents. If both of your parents or one of them reaches the age of they reach the old age, then do not say to them the slightest word of disrespect, a smallest word that can hurt their feeling. Don't say off to them. Off. The word off, meaning, as the scholars have said, that this is. The only word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in order to indicate your disagreement or showing your anger towards your parents. And this is an, an example. It doesn't mean that you are prohibited to use the word of, but other than of, you can say whatever you want. No. La taqullahuma of. Any word. Any statement that can hurt the feeling of your parents, it is haram for you. لا تقول له معوف. Clear instruction from Allah. Clear prohibition. لا تقول له معوف. Do not say off to them. If you do not even, if you do not agree with them, then you have to keep quiet. Instead of arguing with them, shouting at them, disrespecting them, hurting their feelings, all of this is haram. La tanharhuma. La tanharhuma. Do not shout at them. Wa qawlan karima. And say to them the most kind and gentle words. Speak to them in the nicest way. In the most kind way. You need to speak to them with kind and gentle words. And then in the following ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Continues and he says, وَخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower before them the wings of humility and submission. And the word in this ayah is used, the word dhul. Dhul from the same word comes the word dhalil. And most of you or probably all of you, you know the word dhalil is used for someone who is humiliated. Meaning, you as a son and daughter, you must remain in the state of humility before your parents. Before your parents. Because you are in this dunya and your existence in, in this dunya is because of your parents. Out of mercy for them, you must lower 
the wings of humility before them. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِي صَغِيرًا And you must make dua for them saying, O my Lord, irhamhuma, shower your mercy upon both of my parents, كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِي صَغِيرًا As they showed their mercy towards me when I was little and they brought me up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا We have instructed the man to be kind and dutiful towards his parents. And then Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, this is the ayah that is repeated three times in the Quran, Surah Al-Ankabus, Surah Al-Luqman and Surah Al-Ahqaf. And then in Surah Al-Luqman particularly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ a man must remain dutiful towards his parents because his mother carried him and her with weakness upon weakness for the period of nine months. She went through that weakness and very difficult period of time until she gave the birth to you as a son and daughter. And now your, it is your duty, Anishkur li wali walidai that you must remain thankful to me, the Creator, Allah, Wali Walidaik, and you must remain thankful to your parents. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the best mufassir of the Quran amongst the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to say, thalathu ayatin maqroonat, there are three ayat in the Quran, that are that have mentioned two things together and you cannot detach one of them from the other three type of ayat that are mentioned in the quran in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned two things together and you cannot take out one of them and then he radiyallahu ta'ala used to mention those ayat he says one of them is the ayah in which Allah says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So you cannot be a Muslim unless and until you obey Allah and you obey the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. So you cannot separate the obedience to Allah and the obedience to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. As Allah says, مَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ Whoever obeys the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he truly obeys Allah. And whoever obeys Allah, he must obey the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. So obedience to Allah and obedience to the Prophet sallallahu are mentioned together in the Quran. And as a Muslim, you must remain obedient to both of them and you cannot separate. So two things that Allah has mentioned in this ayah. أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and obey the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and you cannot separate them. The second ayah is أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ Establish the prayer and give the zakah. In most of the places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the mention of salah, He mentions zakah together. أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ أَقَامُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُ الزَّكَاةِ The iqama of salah, establishing the salah and giving zakah together. That is why Sayyiduna Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when after the, after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so many fitnas and trials emerged one of them was the fitna of the mani'i zakah those who said we will continue practicing the deen except, except that we will not give zakah because this was something for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only and Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala and who says, Wallahi la uqatilanna man farraqa bayna salati wa zaka. He said, by Allah, I will fight against those who separate or those who differentiate between salah and zaka. Two things mentioned together in the Quran and you cannot separate them. So this is the second ayah. First one is, Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. Second one is, Aqimu salah wa atu zaka. And the third one, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala used to say that Allah said anishkur li wali walidayk and Allah said to you that you must remain grateful and thankful to me and to your parents. 
both together. Which means that you cannot be truly thankful and grateful to Allah until and unless you are thankful to your parents. In order for you to be dutiful to Allah, to pay Allah's rights and fulfill your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must remain dutiful to your parents. Allah Jalal ikram has repeatedly highlighted the importance and significance of being kind and gentle towards the parents. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has explained it, had explained it in many ahadith. There are so many ahadith, obviously the time does not allow us to go through all those ahadith. But I'm going to highlight and mention only some of them. One of them is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that is collected by Imam At-Tabarani rahimahullah in which he alayhi salatu was salam said رِضَ الرَّبِّ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَسَخَطُ الرَّبِّ فِي سَخَطِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ The pleasure of the Lord is attached to the pleasure of your parents. And displeasure of Allah is attached to the displeasure of your parents. Meaning if your father, your mother are pleased with you, it is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. And if your parents are not happy with you, and they are displeased because of your attitude, because of your behavior towards them, or you are not kind and gentle towards them, you argue with them, you shout at them, you disrespect them, you disobey them, in any way, form or shape, you hurt their feeling and they are displeased with you, then this is a clear sign that Allah is displeased with you. Sakhatul Rabbi fi Sakhatul Wali. Or displeasing your parents is a way to displease Allah and this can cause the displeasure of Allah frightening hadith every one of us we should ask ourselves those who have their parents still alive may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them long life healthy life you must remain dutiful to your parents as for those whose parents have passed away even after their death, dear sons and daughters, you still have duty to your parents and I'm going to mention shortly that. How you can pay your duty to your parents after they have left this dunya. But let's talk about those whose parents are still alive. They are the doors for you towards Jannah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the father is the middle door of Jannah. This is the door by which you can pass and you go into Jannah. So must remain, you must remain dutiful to your parents. Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah has collected the hadith on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr bin As radiyallahu ta'ala who says, Ja'a rajulun ila Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam and he said, Jitu ubaji'uka ala al-hijrah. O messenger of Allah, I have come to you in order to give you bay'ah on hijrah. I promise that I will make hijrah for the sake of Allah dhul jalal ikram. And do you know what is the reward of hijrah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever makes hijrah, there are three things that wipe out all of your previous sins. Three, three good deeds that wipe out all of your previous sins. One of them is hijrah. The other one is accepting Islam. And the third one is tawbah, repentance to Allah. So hijrah is one of them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this uh, man came to the Prophet sallallahu and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to give you bay'ah that I will definitely make hijrah. But... My situation and my condition is that taraktu abawayya yabkiyan. I have come to you to give you bay'ah while my, I have left my parents crying. My parents are crying because I'm getting ready to make hijrah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him, irji' ilayhima 
Go back to them. Go back to them. And make them happy as you have made them cry. And it seems that his parents were not Muslims. And this is something very, very important for us to understand. When Allah says in the Quran that you must remain dutiful to your parents, He never ever said that you remain dutiful to your Muslim parents or your practicing parents. No. Your parents are your parents. Whether they are practicing or not practicing, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim, Allah said clearly in Surah Luqman, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا If your parents, they encourage you to associate partners with me or do something that is against my commandment, anything that is contrary to the commandment of Allah or the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you must not listen to them. Because this is a general principle in the deen of Allah. Anyway, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق There is no obedience to the creation at the expense of disobedience of the creator. This is a general rule. So if your parents ask you to do something wrong or to commit a sin, you must not listen to them. But other than that, Allah says وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا صَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا in the matter of the dunya, you must remain kind and duty towards your parents, even if they are mushrik, even if they are kuffar, even if they are not practicing the deen of Allah. What about those children, those sons and daughters who are disobedient to, your, to their parents with the excuse that my parents are not practicing, my father does not pray, my mother does not pray, my mother does not wear hijab, my father does not do this or that. So that I have an excuse to disobey my parents. So that I can hurt their feeling. So that I can argue with them. So that I can disrespect them. No, Wallahi. No. It is haram. It is haram. Prohibited. One of the major sins. One of the major sins. So look at this companion who came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I want to make hijrah while I have left my parents crying. The Prophet وسلم, did not say to them, he did not say to him, Yes, it is okay, it is good, you have taken very good step, you are doing something for the sake of Allah and you have ignored your parents, it is something. No, no. He discouraged him. He said, Go back to them. فَأَضْحِكُمَا كَمَا أَبْكَيْتَهُمَا Make them happy as you have made them cry. Another person came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was seeking Allah's Messenger ﷺ's permission to take part in one of the battles in jihad. One of the greatest acts of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the deen of Islam. So he wanted to take part in jihad along with the Prophet ﷺ. And he was seeking the Prophet ﷺ's permission. The Prophet ﷺ asked him, Alaka abawan? Do you have your parents? He said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, Go fafihima fajahid. Go strive in them. Meaning, do jihad in them. Make efforts to serve them. Make efforts to serve them and obey them and keep them happy. This is jihad for you. And in some condition, in some situations, it becomes a jihad. Definitely, no doubt. And especially when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you and you have become regular in your five daily prayers, you have started practicing the deen of Allah, but your parents are on a wrong path. They are not practicing. Or perhaps they are even mocking you because of your practice of the deen. Regardless, regardless, you still have to be obedient and kind and gentle towards them. In fact, 
after Allah has guided you towards his deen and you have started practicing the deen, you must be even more kind and gentle towards them in order to show them that you truly obey Allah and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam because Allah is the one and the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam is the one who have instructed you and commanded you to remain obedient and dutiful and kind and gentle towards your people. Show that best akhlaq. And unfortunately it is very hurtful when we hear some practicing brothers and sisters whose parents complain against them that they are disrespectful they are not dutiful towards their parents although they themselves within themselves they think that they are pleasing Allah my dear brother and sister in Islam, remember always this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. رِضَ الرَّبِّ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَسَخَطُ الرَّبِّ فِي سَخَطُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ The pleasure of the Lord is with the pleasure of your parents. And the displeasure of the Lord is with the displeasure of your parents. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, and you know this hadith, very famous hadith. A companion came to the Prophet, uh, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, Man ahaqqun nasi bi husni sahabati, ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, amongst all the people, all the creation of Allah, who deserves the most of my companionship? Pay attention to the words of the hadith. He did not say who deserves my kindness, my gentleness, my dutifulness the most? No, he said, Man ahaqqun nasi bi husni sahabati. Who is the most deserving of my companionship so that I am with him or her? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ummuk, your mother. He said, Thumma man. Then who after my mother? The Prophet ﷺ said, Ummuk, again your mother. Third time he said, Thumma man, who after my mother then? The Prophet ﷺ, third time he said, Ummuk, your mother. And then he said, Thumma man, then after my mother, who? The Prophet ﷺ said, then Abuk, then your father. What do we learn from this hadith? Look at the question of this companion and the answer of the Prophet ﷺ. Who deserve my companionship the most? Meaning, who deserves that I spend most of my time with? Who deserves the most of my time? The Prophet ﷺ said, your mother, your mother, your mother. Your family, your children, your friends, your siblings, your business, your job, your work, everything comes after your parents. Ummuk, ummuk, ummuk. How many of now? Unfortunately, we have neglected our parents. Simply because of the fact that the parents do not complain. They live on their own. They always, they always wait for their children to come and visit them. But the children are busy. The son says, I have job. I have my family. I have my children. No doubt. You have all those responsibilities, all those obligations. My dear brother and sister in Islam, your parents, your mother comes first. Your mother comes first. Man ahaqqun nasi bi husni sahabati. And being dutiful and kind and gentle towards parents does not always mean that you spend your money on them. Although this is also one of the best way of spending your wealth. But... Even if, you, if your parents do not need your money, they do not need anything from you, they do not need your financial help or support. The most deserving of your companionship that you spend your most of your time with is your mother. So don't make an excuse that you do not have time. You have time for your work eight, nine, ten hours every day. You have time for your children. You have time for your wife. But when it comes to your parents, you say, I try to visit my parents once a week. Ask yourself, is this the justice? Is this adl? Is this something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed you? Is this the way of being dutiful and kind and gentle towards your parents? No, wallahi. 
every single minute that you spend in the companionship of your parents is far better than spending your time elsewhere. With your friends, with your family, with your children, with anyone else. So try to spare your time. Give your, par give your parents preference over everything. Over everything. Nowadays we hear a very common question. A person comes to the Imam and he asks a question. Imam, I have my family, I have my wife, I have my children, I have my parents. So how can I keep balance between both? What should be the answer? You keep balance between two things that are equal. Two things that are equal. Your family, your children are not equal to your parents. Your parents have higher right, bigger right, and you have greater responsibility towards your parents than your children. And if, wallahi, if you remain dutiful and, and uh, uh, if you remain kind and dutiful and obedient to your parents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. He will grant you barakah in your health, in your wealth, in your family, in your provision, everything. You must have heard the hadith of those three individuals who were stuck in a cave. And one of them, he got his dua answered because of this very good deed. That he went out one day because he was a shepherd. He went out with his goats or sheep. And he came back late at home when he found his parents had gone to sleep. And he milked those goats and he was waiting by the side or by the bed of his parents for them to wake up so that he can present the milk to them. And his own children were crying beside him. And he did not want to give his children preference over his parents although the, the children are awake and the parents are asleep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted dua of this individual just because of this good deed and he made dua to Allah remember the day the time you are the most kind and dutiful towards your mother and your father. And when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raise your hands and beg to Allah, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, I please, I tried to please my parents. And that moment and that time and that day, solely for your sake, Oh Allah, I beg you that you accept my dua because of my good deed. Because of my kindness and dutifulness towards my parents. And then you will see that Allah accepts and answers your dua. This is one of the, one of the best ways of calling upon Allah. And one of the best ways of getting your duas and supplications answered by Allah. Do not take it something light. Something optional. Rather this is a duty. This is an obligation. This is a fard upon you. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he alayhi salatu wa sallam has encouraged us by giving us or by stating to us so many virtues and the rewards of being dutiful and kind and gentle towards our parents. On the other hand, he alayhi salatu wa sallam has warned us against our negligence towards our parents. He alayhi salatu was salam said in a hadith, Thalathatun la yanduru allahu ilayhim yawmul qiyamati wala yukallimuhum wala yuzakkihim wala hum adabun alim. Three types of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at them on the day of judgment. Allah will not speak to them. Allah will not purify them from sins. Rather, they will be thrown in the fire of hell with severe punishment. One of them is al-aqli walidayh. The one who is disobedient to his parents. One of the major serious sins. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala who says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me with ten different good deeds. And one of them was, he said, 
لا تشرك بالله شيئا وان قتلت او حرقت او معاذ never associate a partner with Allah even if you are cut into pieces and if you are burned in the fire never commit shirk with Allah and then he alayhi salatu wasalam amongst those ten advised he alayhi salatu wasalam said la ta'uqqanna walidayk never ever disobey your parents never displease your parents wa in amaraka an takhruja min ahlika wa malik even if they instruct you and they order you to leave your family and leave the wealth of this dunya leave your job leave your work listen to them obey them and never hurt their feeling he asked the question how can i have balance between my job and my parents and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says la ta'uqanna walidayn wa in amarak an takhruja min ahlika wa malik in another hadith which is reported by Abu Darda radiyallahu ta'ala in a similar hadith that Abu Darda says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me and he said أطيع والديك وإن أمراك أن تخرج من دنياك فخرج لهما Obey your parents all the time never disobey them and even if they ask you to leave this dunya leave this dunya in order to keep them happy and please them And as he said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has warned us against negligence towards our parents. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said in a hadith that is very strong, powerful. He alaihi salatu wasallam said, "Ma min dhambin ajdaru." أن يعجل الله لصاحبه العقوبة في الدنيا إلا عقوق الوالدين. There is no sin that deserves that Allah سبحانه وتعالى hasten towards the punishment of the committer of that sin in this dunya before the akhirah except عقوق الوالدين disobedience to parents. This is the only sin that deserves. The person who commits that sin, that person deserves to be punished in this dunya before the next life. And this is something that every one of us should know. And something that is commonly known. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and especially those brothers and sisters who are already parents themselves. If you want your children to be obedient to you, then you must show your obedience towards your parents one of the greatest punishment for the parents in this dunya can be one of the greatest and the most hurtful punishment in this dunya can be when you see your children your own children disobeying you and in most of the cases in most of the cases this is the punishment of your own disobedience to your parents you were you were disrespectful you were neglectful towards your parents you were disobedient towards your parents hence allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has punished you in this dunya that your children your sons and daughters have become disobedient to you this is one of the forms of the punishment in this dunya another one is what we learn from the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the story of juraij Has anyone heard about Juraij? Does anyone know about Juraij? Anyone? No. Oh. Yes, Abid min Bani Israel, someone who was known for his worship amongst Bani Israel, Juraij. Remember this name Juraij. And then surely I'm going to mention another name. So remember these two names. The first one is Juraij. two opposite stories juraij someone who was known for his worship spending his day and night worshiping allah dul jalal ikram but unfortunately he thought that worshiping allah dul jalal ikram spending my time in prayer doing the adhkar making dua to allah is the only way to please allah and to worship allah to the level that he thought that it, his mother is 
something that can be distracting for him from the worship of Allah. So he neglected his mother. He left his mother. He excluded himself in a monastery and he started spending his time there day and night to the extent that he was known within whole community as someone who is the most pious in the whole community because he never goes out of his monastery and he spends his days his day and night worshiping Allah one day his mother needed him she came to his monastery and she knocked the door and she said ya juraj she called upon juraj and juraj was offering his salah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when juraj heard his mother calling him he said ya rabbi ummi wa salati within himself he said to himself o oh my lord my mother and my prayer i have my mother calling me on one hand on the other hand i am busy in my prayer so who should i give preference to and then he decided to give preference to his salah over answering to the call of his mother and he continued his salah the mother waited at the door and then she left second time she came she called upon juraj again and juraj again is busy in his salah and he again thought to himself that he has his mother calling him and he has his prayer who to give the preference and then he gave the preference to salah and he continued his salah and he neglected his mother third time his mother came and she got upset and remember wallahi your mother does not get upset on something minor it never happens your mother gets upset to the extent that she makes dua against you only when you have torn her heart when you have disobeyed her again and again and again and you have disrespected her and you have disobeyed and and you have disobeyed her so many times when you have torn her heart that is the point when mother makes dua against you otherwise the one who has carried you for 9 months in your in in her womb weakness upon weakness difficulty upon difficulty how can she make dua against you it is impossible if she makes dua against you it is only and solely because of your attitude and because of your behavior towards her so you cannot blame your parents that your parents do not give you your right your due right ask yourself to what extent you have given your parents their rights so juraid's mother she got angry she got upset and she said allahumma la tumitu hatta yandura wujuh almumisat wallah do not allow my pious and righteous child my son juraid to die until unless he encounters the faces of the prostitute meaning she made dua against him and what happened allah accepted the dua of the mother of juraid against who against someone who is known as most pious amongst the whole community abid the zahid allah accepted the dua of his mother what happened there was a prostitute within that community she gave birth to a child and when she was asked about the father of the child she pointed towards juraid and she said the father of this child is juraid the whole community got together they attacked juraid they humiliated him they started beating him and they started cursing him swearing at him and they even destroyed his monastery and they were saying we thought that you are the most pious and righteous amongst us all and this is what you have done you committed a zina committed a fornication and then he said juraid said please wait let me offer two rak'at let me offer two rak'at he said okay they still had some kind of respect for them they allowed him to offer two rak'at it seemed that within his salah he realized his mistake and his sin what was the sin negligence towards his mother his 
seems that he repented within his salah. After he completed his salah, he said to them, bring that child to me. They brought the child and he poked on the side of the child and he asked the child, who is your father? And the Prophet ﷺ said, there are three children who have spoken, the baby's newborn who has spoken in, you know, after they were born. And th this child is one of them. So he poked on the side of the child and he asked him, who is your father? And he said, that shepherd. There was a shepherd who used to come and he used to take shelter within the monastery of Juraid. He was the actual one who had committed zina with that prostitute. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show to the people that the one who is disobedient or neglectful towards his mother, no matter how pious and righteous he is and how much respect he has within his community, he can be humiliated if the mother of that pious and righteous makes dua against him. Subhanallah, on the other hand, and I'm going to finish by this in Jalabi because there are so many ahadiths, I can't mention all of them. I don't want to take too much of your time. Just, just pay attention to this final story, Uwais. Does anyone know about Uwais? Uwais al-Qarni? The people of Yemen, is there anyone from Yemen? Yeah, the people of Yemen. Uwais al-Qarni. Someone who lived during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he did not get chance to meet with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that he is not a Sahabi. He is not a Sahabi. And there are different types of narrations about Uwais and one of the narrations says that once he wanted to meet with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the way, he was known, someone who was known for his utmost respect and dutifulness towards his mother. And this was the only thing because of which he could not meet with the Prophet ﷺ because he was based in Yemen. And one of the narrations says that uh, Uwais, once he sought his mother's permission and he said, Oh mother, allow me to go to Medina to at least meet with the Prophet ﷺ, so that I can attain the virtue of becoming a, a Sahabi, Sahibu Rasulullah, a companion of the Prophet. ﷺ. And the reward of being a companion is that the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever sees me while in the, in the state of Iman, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the fire of hell haram upon them. Great virtue. So always he sought the permission of his mother, he came to Medina al munawwara So his mother granted him the permission, but she said, Dear son, try to come back as soon as you can. As soon as you meet with the Prophet, come back. Because I always need you. And he used to, he used to clothe her, he used to cook for her, he used to even feed her, he used to carry her on, on his back. He used to serve her and he used to be with her day and night. She could not live without him. But she gave him permission to go and visit the Medina. When he arrived in Medina, he found out that the Prophet ﷺ was not there. He alayhi salatu wasalam, had gone elsewhere out of Medina. So he straight away he left Medina and he went back. The Prophet ﷺ once mentioned to his companions. He said, يَأْتِيكُمْ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْيَمَنْ مِنْ قَرْمْ The time will come that a man will come to you from Yemen from Qarm. Before I continue with the hadith, you tell me, my dear brother and sister in Islam, how did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did the Prophet sallam know about Uwais? How did he know about Uwais? Is there any mention? There is no mention that anyone informed the Prophet ﷺ. It seems apparently that Allah informed the Prophet ﷺ about, about Uwais. Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, A man 
from Yemen, from particular region known as Qarm. Nothing prevents him from visiting me except his mother. He is very dutiful towards his mother. And then look what the Prophet ﷺ said. Listen carefully. The Prophet ﷺ said to his companions. And amongst the companions are Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, Ali, Ridwanullah and Ajma'in. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, Whenever one of you meets with this individual, with this man, Uwais al-Qarni, you, my companions, request him to make dua for you. Subhanallah. You should ask him to make dua for you because his dua is accepted and answered by Allah. Because of what? Because of his dutifulness towards his mother. And... It did happen actually in the history during the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went to Makkah al-Mukarramah in order to perform hajj and he encountered with the people of Yemen. There were some people who had come from Yemen to perform hajj. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked them, he asked them particularly, he said, do you know this individual known as Uwais from that particular region known as Qarn? They said, yes, we know him. He's known for his dutifulness and his, and his service towards his mother. Umar radiallahu ta'ala who said to them, when you people go back, send my salam, give my salam to Uwais and please request him on my behalf to make dua for Umar radiallahu ta'ala. This was Uwais. So look at one hand you have Juraj, on the other hand you have Uwais. Someone who is dutiful towards his mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his rank. If you want blessings of Allah, if you want the mercy of Allah, if you want blessing in your provision, in your risk, in your work, in your health, in your family, if you want your children to become obedient to you, then be dutiful towards your parents. Be dutiful towards your parents. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as he said, those whose parents have passed away, you still have duty towards them. You still have obligations towards them. They are not physically in this dunya. They have gone into their graves. One of the way of paying your duty towards your parents is that you always make dua for them. Always remember them in your duas. Allah the one who has instructed you, the one who has ordered you to be dutiful towards your parents, he out of his mercy has taught you the dua. He himself has taught you the dua. In Surah Al-Isra, Rabbi Rahmuma. Rabbi Rahmuma, Kama Rabbi Yani Sagheer. My Lord, Shawa, you mercy on my parents as they brought me up when I was young and little. Always remember your parents in your dua. Even when you make dua for yourself, before you make dua for yourself, never forget your parents. Never forget your parents. Make dua for them as well. And there is no harm in including that dua, Rabbi Rahmuma Kama Rabbi Yani Sagira. It's part of your prayer in tashahud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, once you have read your tashahud, then you can choose whatever dua you want to make. You can choose any dua. And when you are sitting in tashahud, make dua for your parents. Make dua for your parents in sujood. Remember your parents in your dua all the time. Another way of being dutiful towards your parents after they have left this dunya is to give sadaqah and charity on their behalf. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was asked by a companion who said, O Messenger of Allah, my mother has passed away all of a sudden. And I'm sure if she was given a chance, she would have given her wealth in charity as sadaqah. 
So can I give sadaqa on her behalf now? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes, you can give sadaqa on her behalf. Another way of being dutiful towards your parents after their death is that you keep connected, keep yourself linked and connected with those who are close to your parents, with those who had friendship with your parents, either your father or your mother. Imam Muslim rahimahullah has reported on the authority of Abdullah ibn Dinar rahimahullah who was a student of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Abdullah ibn Dinar says, once I saw Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he was riding his donkey and he was traveling from Medina to Mecca al mukarramah On the way, he found, he saw a Bedouin walking in the desert. Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he got out he got off of his donkey and he gave that donkey to that Bedouin. And then Abdullah ibn Umar, he started walking himself. Abdullah ibn Dinar says, I said to Abdullah ibn Umar, Aslah Allahu balaka ya ibn Umar, may Allah rectify your affairs, O Abdullah ibn Umar, what happened to you? That was a Bedouin. And you gave him your donkey and you started walking? What is the reason? Why did you do that? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he said, because his father was close to my father. His father, not him. His father was very close to my father. Abdullah, my father, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I have heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu saying, Inna abarr al-birri silatul waladi ahla wuddi abi. One of the best deeds, one of the best deeds is that a person, that a son and daughter keeps a good relationship with those who had good relationship or friendship with his parents. To that extent, the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to be dutiful towards our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to be dutiful towards our parents. Those whose parents are alive, may Allah give them tawfiq and ability to respect them, to obey them, to serve them, to spend time with them, to spend their money on them. And to, most importantly, make dua for them. And those whose parents have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon them. May Allah dhul jalla forgive their sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn their graves to the gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their ranks in Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq and ability to act upon whatever we hear and whatever we say. Innahu sami'un qareeb mujib. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruk wa atubu.